Hi, beautiful people. I hope you're having a beautiful day. So today I'm going to talk about how to use journaling to benefit your health, because it's a tool that I do use and I do suggest to my clients, but there is a slight, you know, um, it has to, we have to be a little bit careful not to tr re-traumatize ourselves every time we start, we write the um you know the emotions and the the situation down so i'm just going to give you an outline today about how to do it without re-traumatizing yourself i call them daily check-ins and i do this every single day uh, for my you know to build emotional awareness um the emotional you know iq what they call emotional eq what it's called um so that it you can start to actually see you, you know you can benefit this from this because you can start to see patterns forming and you can actually just having it down on paper really helps to kind of just stop the freak out you know there's you know if you're having a freak out about something or the over you know running uh the train of thought that you know the that just creates this kind of like chaos in your fit you know in your, in your brain but also in your physical health because you're 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 just you know, your system is just overwhelmed, right? So the mind-body syndrome is very much to do with the emotions. It's very much to do with create with lack of feeling of safety in your um, nervous system. And if you're unsure about how you're feeling or why you're feeling it and your emotions that you're feeling, it creates a lot of uncertainty and a lot of feelings of danger. So perceived danger, pain, um, TMS or mind body syndrome are all psychosomatic disorders are all the same, um, same thing, right? So when you're starting to have emotional um, EQ uh, in, in the sense that you're starting to understand a little bit better your emotions and have a kind of place to actually write them down is a really, really great start. So the problem with um, journaling is that we often get into a state where we're just in the narrative, which means that we're in the story. And the more that we actually stay in the story, the more that we actually wire that into our body, um, you know, the neurons are firing and you're creating strong emotions about those emotions, about those things that happen to you and making meaning from them. So we're trying to want to try and avoid that, right? And also daily check-ins can be used for the moment for triggers. So when we're starting for the mo for this moment rather than the past, more so in the sense that we're, we, we have plenty of opportunities to overcome the past through our daily triggers in the present moment, right? So yes, there is a time for going back and, you know, um, journaling about the past, uh, I would suggest with caution, um, uh, but using our daily triggers as a kind of gymnasium, you know, going to the gym and actually building our muscle of self-compassion and self-love and being able to actually uh, feel the emotions with ease and rather than them having us, and we, you know, we can actually have our emotions about this and we can actually start to change the meaning that we've made in the past through look identifying the limiting beliefs so it's actually an opportunity and I usually you know it's not all but it's not all the time but I usually take triggers as an opportunity to practice um you know to identifying the limiting beliefs that's behind that I'm still living by basically because we are running our programs 95 percent of the time so this is my um check-in diary right journal and the other thing we have to remember is we have to be start this compassionate inquiry from Gorbe Mate, you know, who's a trauma expert. It's a beautiful um, kind of combination of daily check-ins and, co and compassion, compassionate inquiry. I've combined them together to create this sense of giving space to the feeling that's coming up. Right. The more that we can actually do that and just say, hey, you know, I'm here and listening to you, the more that we can create safety internally. Right. If we're allowing ourselves to feel that. And of course, this is a gift that we can give to our children as well. But just, you know, just for let's say for ourselves right now and our inner child. OK, so how often do we actually say, 
you know, it's okay to feel these things. And I'm going to give you five minutes or 10 minutes or a couple of minutes just to feel them, you know, and just to seek and inquire inside of me with this beautiful kind of curiosity and compassionate, like to really just tune into your body and say, hey, I'm here, right? So I'm going to give you a couple of frameworks about how to actually do this. So, yeah, the first thing we want to do, um, I'm going to ask you, give you a couple of questions, basically, how we can actually start to um, to do this without rewiring it in. Right. So question one would be when I'm when you're triggered, you know, just or you can just do it as well when, when you're not triggered. I mean, you can do it just as a, an inquiry. Right. So how am I feeling right now? How am I feeling right now? It helps to put your heart, your hand on your heart and just say, hey, body, you know, how are you doing? How are you feeling right now? Right. And giving the sense of um, I'm here for you. I'm listening to you. I'm um, accepting you just as you are. Like how many times do we actually that's that's our ultimate need is this connection and um, self uh, um, others and beyond. But, you know, it starts with self. Right. So how am I feeling? And you validate and calibrate whatever is coming up for you. So I will go into parts work another time, but this is, you know, it can be a part of me that's feeling emotion, I'm feeling sad, or a part of me that's feeling like frustrated, right? So there may be met several parts, it might not be just one emotion, but let's just stay with this ease of things and say, okay, it, I'm feeling, um, I might be feeling a six out of 10 uh, frustrated right now, or I might be feeling a six out of 10 um fear in fear right now right so let's stay with that because that's a very common one for for my body syndrome the fear the fear of the symptoms worsening or keeping staying forever or whatever right so validating calibrating scientists have shown that if you actually put a name and a number to your emotion your nervous system can relax much easier so it now knows okay now i need to run the program for fear right and we you know i'll go into that a little bit later but the the program if we can just say what it is it actually ju it just helps the nervous system to relax so validate I'm feeling, right? I am feeling, not I am in fear, not with I am statement, because that's actually the, you know, very important um, step here. I am feeling a six out of 10. So calibrate, validate and calibrate, right? So then we say, why am I feeling this? And again, this is an opportunity. This is not an opportunity to write a whole prose, blah, blah, blah happened to me. And this, he did that. And she did this, said this, and I felt this and blah, blah, blah. It's just literally facts, like a small sentence. This happened, this happened, and this happened, right? And I felt that, right? So that you just keep it very much into the, into the now, then you can sit, start tuning into that feeling where in the body I'm feeling it. So that helps to start, stay with the where, which is my, you know, I go into this in detail in the um, emotional mastery course that I've done online. You can have check that out. Um, so we want to stay with the where in the body. Are we feeling this? Because this helps the emotion, the energy emotion move. So why am I feeling this and where, right? Uh, the two things the why very short where more so get to, um and then what am i believing the next question what am i believing will happen so this is a great question to get to the end result to the worst case scenario to the belief of the limiting belief basically behind the story that you've created and the limiting belief so we are we are run by our beliefs the beliefs Unfortunately, we're put in usually uh, in our the age of zero to seven and we never, ever question them again. So it's actually an amazing opportunity to get to your limiting beliefs and actually get to the part that goes, I'm not good enough or I, you know, I believe that I'm always going to be a bad mom because I had one. I had, you know, I have a six year old daughter and I, you know, I'm consciously parenting her. And so this is. Um, you know, it's always I'm being triggered by her or you know, I'm getting triggered by her all the time. Right. So it's a it's an opportunity to always bring back, come back to the limiting beliefs and get into the real to like an opportunity to actually correct those limiting beliefs, basically. Right. 
So I'm always going to be in pain. I'm always usually with an always or some kind of like, you know, um, over exaggeration. So though that you can start, you underline the limiting belief, right? Then you start asking, is this past or thing or future thinking? So we can, and you can just say yes or no to each one. So it's, this is a way to actually start to look at our patterns. So the past thinking is like something you've done so many, many times before, and you can actually see, well, actually that's a past that's really not serving me. And you can start to see the kind of like problems with that. Or if it's think future thinking, then we can actually say at the end of the day, well, well we don't actually know that that's going to happen. So that's, you know, it's a way to kind of like just check in and know that our thinking and our thinking feeling state is very much like reels. They're going on on and on and on because they're just grooved into us right so we're actually kind of addicted to kind addicted to our to the hit of those um, emotions and the cocktail of of um neurotransmitters and emo and hormones and uh you know the emotion the uh, the molecules of emotions that are released through that emotion right so we have to start thinking we're, we're kind of like getting into the realization that this is past thinking it's not serving me and this or this is future thinking so that that's not it's an unknown basically and i'm scared of the unknown which is also perfectly fine but it just helps to clarify right so then we get to the next question how do i choose to move forward so this is a very empowering question because now we're actually got to the base where we're actually right choosing to give i you know to find a you know, an alternative way rather than a complete utter breakdown or a difficulty in, you know, you're, you're getting to the point where you can start to say, okay, what do I choose? Once you've gone through the emotion, like the wave of the emotions, right? So you've gone through the process of the wave of feeling the emotion for a few minutes or a few seconds or whatever it is, breathing deeply into that in the beginning of the, of the, where am I feeling it and breathing into it? I've done again, I've done a whole webinar on this, so please go and see it. Mastering your emotions. Um, so then uh we get to the state where we can start to actually sit, make a choice uh decision at that point, right? So, how do I choose to move forward is a very, very kind of empowering question. I choose to give myself, and it can just be simple, simple, some, something as simple as this. I choose to give myself more compassion and self-love as I know I'm in the right place in the right time, or I choose to do some tapping, or I choose to do some havening. Again, I've done videos on tapping and havening and all the soothing tools that I recommend to my clients and that I use personally. And so having a toolbox for these in case the trigger is over, you know, like is more than is like a 10 out of 10 or is like an eight out of 10 so that it's really high and, and it's not enough just to kind of do the journaling. You can do some tapping, you can do some havening, you can do some breathing, deep breathing, coherence breathing um emdr all of these techniques again I've, i have videos for all of them so um you can choose your tool if your if your trigger is still over a certain level right so you can and then this is a choice right so and then go back and look at your limiting belief that you had and make a more empowering one so once you've got to the power empowerment phase uh, of this uh, the journaling state uh, stages of the journaling you can make an I am statement from that be the limiting beliefs that you've had and this can be as simple as like um so uh if I'm I feel like I'm always going to be in pain you can say um I choose I am uh becoming day every day I'm becoming more and more uh, pain free or I'm um, every day I'm I I am uh, believing in myself more and more or every day or for example for you know with that my with my limiting beliefs that I had about my my um, conscious parenting I am doing the best I can you know as a mom Right. So my worst case scenario was I'm going to always going to be a crappy mom or blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's we we go through this process. And so at the end of the day, you can just say I'm doing my best. I'm worthy also of unconditional love. I'm worthy of forgiveness. 
And so you can ch- kind of just change it around. It doesn't have to be, I am the best mom in the world. You know, if that's not a, a belief that resonates with you, you can do in- incremental beliefs into the in the right direction, right? We just need to just shift from the lowest limiting belief to the next step in the um in the kind of stepping stones to the ultimate belief which is you know i'm a you know perfect or you know because we're all perfect but if we have the fact is we have to believe that right so becoming more um in you know the childlike um that you know being the child of god or the the unified field uh we're all connected we're all one we are godicals so until we can get to that point where we can, which is the ultimate, right? I am a godical. We need to make some stepping stones in between. It might be a bit of a jump. Maybe not. Maybe if you're right. You're ready to say I'm a godical, which is great, right? So I'm practicing compassion and softness. Those are my kind of like, um, those were the, you know, stepping stones that I had from my previous I've done many, many journalings of this. So it's it's like you start to see also the patterns that you have create, that you have like the, the loopholes, sorry, the looping um, and the kind of entanglement of these emotions and these states that we create in ourselves. Well, we don't, well, yeah, they're created in ourselves in the sense that they are just, a, it's a real, it's a repeating pattern. So we can start to see the patterns when we actually really get to the level of the, what is the limiting belief. Um. So yeah, so out loud, saying your statements out loud three times is a great way of starting to build it into your system. And you can ha- you can do that several times throughout the day. So you can have like a, an affirmation for the day if you want, or a couple of affirmations for the day. And you can start to build it in and bring, you know, ha- putting your hand on your heart and breathing in that feeling with, is changing the embodiment of your experience of that state, right? So with that, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm getting bunged up again. It's endless amount of snot. Excuse my, excuse me. It's just, you know, this cleansing, clearing, purging process is has been a very big, strong one this time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you again tomorrow. I hope this is helpful. And by the way, please share with other people. Let other people know, um, you know, th- this information of tools, soothing tools and, and journaling tools and all these things for people who are in pain and who have, you know, other disease in their body it has, you know, is really, really beneficial to people. So just let them, just let other people know about it. And if you have any questions or, you know, um, reach out to me, um and make or make a comment below saying this has been helpful just to let me know what's helpful for people and what's not all right we'll so see you next time bye